And you don't hear very many of the candidates talking about that because, no, it's a big bot out there. And they have – Native Americans can't do anything for them, so they're not going to pay any attention to them. But I'll tell you what. There is not a single Democrat that I have heard come up with anything that is positive, positive. Everything that they come up with is a negative in the way things are right now. And yes, people, it isn't over until the fat lady sings. And that means that if everybody gets complacent and says, oh, Donald's going to whip their butt. No, that's all right. I don't have to go and vote. Let me tell you what. Oh, Dewey thought he had the election. Truman woke up the next morning. He was president of the United States. That's right. And that's not the first time it has happened. Yeah. So you cannot ever, ever take it for granted. No. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for your thoughts, Sharon. I would note one more thing as we, we go to the break, and that would be this. Uh, here, here, Barack Obama now has been uh, tweeting up a storm about how he's responsible for this wonderful economy. I, is that the same wonderful economy that all the Democrats running for president say is terrible? I wonder if they've talked that over with Barack. one eight six six five zero jimbo back in a moment. Back to Jimbo Hannon Show at one eight six six five zero Jimbo one eight six six five zero five four six two six. At this juncture, the Democrats have a real problem. No real front runner. The greatest likelihood of a brokered convention since the Republicans in nineteen seventy six, when Gerald Ford just barely beat Ronald Reagan. And nobody except Bernie has really caught fire with a significant part of the Democratic electorate. And much of the rest of the party finds Bernie and his backers to be a little too extreme. And so coming out of Milwaukee in July unified is not going to be easy for them. And I certainly will do all I can to help. (laughs) All right, David in Dallas uh, joins us. Hi, David. Good evening, Jimbo. I love the subject. I just wanted to offer something to you. Have you ever seen the movie Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd? Absolutely, and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, especially Jamie Lee Curtis. Mr. Mr. Bloomberg, if you remember, the point of that movie was taking, what, a bum off of the street. It was the basic basic My Fair Lady, the Pygmalion story, exactly, and and it was Eddie Murphy instead of Julie Andrews. Exactly. So to me, you know, in today's society, especially with access to the Internet, you don't have to have a degree or go to college to be a multimillionaire or even a billionaire. So Richard Branson comes to mind. So from my perspective, it's easier to do what Bloomberg did than to go out there and plant, you know, a thousand (laughs) acres. (laughs) <laughs> month after month, you know, year after year. Like, yeah. like you say, all the stuff that you have to go through. Yeah. Because he don't, don't, commodities, isn't that something they bet stocks on? Stocks are just basically like going to Vegas. I trade stocks and stuff. So you made your money off of these people's work. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what you do. Don't forget from the uh, from the movie Trading Places, of course, they were talking about orange juice futures in that movie. So your point is well taken, uh, David. Uh, absolutely well taken. Yeah, I'd love to see Michael Bloomberg try and farm and just uh, stick a, 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 a corn seed in the ground <laughs> and, and, and water it and watch the plant come up. Good point, sir. All righty, to uh, Randy in Redding, Pennsylvania. Hello, Randy. Hello, Jim. I just can't get the picture of Sponge Mike knee deep in a manure pit out of my mind. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's a beautiful image. I want to thank you for that, Randy. <laughs> well, your, your earlier caller gave that to me, and and Bloomberg having that n- nice square head. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's a very really dense good. One at that, I, I that that picture just sticks in my mind. But Dave uh, made my point. When Bloomberg talks about how it is so simple to farm, it is just as simple to buy stocks low and sell them high. Isn't that how you make your money? That's pretty much buy low, sell high, last I checked, yeah. Just one one uh, observation uh, you were saying about with Trump. 
I think part of what he is doing with um, Missile Man is simply Rocket Man. Sorry, it's more of a setup. It's not so much that he admires him, but he makes him think so, so it disarms him. Well, if, if, possibly, uh, maybe, I, maybe he's I, more I'm, Machiavellian and uh, and a more complex thinker than I ever realized, Randy. I, I just didn't know. Well, I I just I, I listen to what he says right. and, and the results, and I keep thinking about him as a businessman. Yeah. And when you go into a business deal, you you don't want your uh, opponent, if you want to call it that, to be on guard. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I think for what it's worth, I mean, I, I hope that you're right. I hope that that's what we actually see at, at work here. Uh, here's a Kim in Shields, Michigan. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hey, Kim. Uh, yeah, I want to say first that one guy that calls in from New York, he does say funny things. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, yes. You know, the one that he always ends it with something funny. But, uh huh. Um, yeah, and like with Biden, when he go, does the. Um, Let's do the push-up thing. Yeah. On one of my shows, they were saying it's like the Steinfeld one where it's go time. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then all three of them. Yeah. See, guys, there's a yeah, difference. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I do. See, there's a difference between people who are, are funny deliberately and people who are funny but don't realize it. That's a big difference. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say is that guy that called in from Vermont, and he said that, well, President Trump doesn't have a good memory. He, President Trump has an amazing memory. He does most of his speeches off the top of his head. He'll stand there and talk for 15 minutes, a half hour, when he's getting on the helicopter. He doesn't have to stumble and bumble like Obama did, reading off a teleprompter and going, uh, 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 you know. Right. Trump uh-huh. is amazing. He's got a really sharp memory. I, I, these people, and I was glad tonight that you gave a couple of them what for, a couple of the, you know, really opinionated ones. I noticed that tonight. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad that uh, that it, it uh it uh, was uh, was what you found to be the right thing to say, Kim, and appreciate your thoughts there. Uh, more to come on the Bohanna Show at one eight six six five zero Jimbo. And uh, if you have an inkling of maybe changing your whole life, stay tuned when we come back. Dale Joyce lives on Swan's Island, Maine. Swan's Island is off the coast of Maine, about six miles off the coast. We're south of Bar Harbor, so we're actually in what's known as Down East Maine. With partner Jennifer Hellman, Dale runs the Harbor Watch Inn. It's a four-unit inn on Swan's Island. Now this is Swan Island. Customers either come across, walk across, or drive across on the ferry. It is an automobile ferry. Or they show up in their own boat. But once you get there, there's plenty to do. There is a beautiful lighthouse, one of the things we're we're well known for. It's also a working waterfront. We have a, a harbor that has two lobster buyers and all the traditional lobster boats out there. We also have the Marine Museum that covers the history of boats and fishing and lobstering on the island from the 1700s to now. And outdoors. There are a number of different hiking trails. There is a a quarry pond back about 120 years ago. They used to quarry granite. And when they stopped, the hole that they created filled up with fresh water. So it's a beautiful little spot to go have a picnic and do some swimming. At the Harbor Watch Inn? We have four uh, traditional rooms. Two of them are beds and a bath, and we have a microwave and a mini fridge, coffee pot. And then the other two have full kitchens. Oh, and there's this. We are the only lodging on the island. And the winters, they're not bad. We get the ocean currents, so our winters tend to be a little bit on the milder side, a little bit warmer, a little bit less snow. By Maine standards, if you like the sound of all that, consider this. We also run a fine art gallery, and I'm a fine art photographer, and that is requiring more and more of our time, so we kind of had to choose. Log on to winourin.com and be listening for our next report tomorrow at this time. The Offbeat, I'm Jim Bohannon. Uh, seriously, this sounds like it could be a lot of fun here. Again, uh, you can learn more about this. We'll tell you about it tomorrow night, but uh, winourin.com, W-I-N-O-U-R-I-N-N.com. 
it's it's kind of a neat thing. Uh, incidentally, uh, Valentine's Day, of course, is just behind us, and researchers at Appalachian State University had a handy tip. They studied couples who roast each other daily. That is to say, they tease each other, and they find those couples have longer and happier relationships. That's right, Monica and Chandler had it all figured out. And while Valentine's Day is still fresh in our memories, consider reasons people read that women, if you will, people, but the reasons that women often break up with their mates. A survey commissioned by the cleaning supply company Durgall, no conflict of interest there. What are the biggest household pet peeves? 29% say not completely closing the refrigerator door. 37% uh, leaving cabinet drawers open, 38% leaving the toilet seat up, and 45% leaving dirty dishes in the sink. Yeah, every guy I know gets furious about that. Okay, it's not too early to be thinking about summer camp, not when you consider all the types of summer camps there are. We're not talking about your old canoeing and archery summer camps and not even the super hobby camps like space camps. There are now some really pricey summer camps which teach kids how to increase their SAT scores, write better essays, and polish their interviewing skills. Boy, that was always how I wanted to spend my summers. At these camps, I guess you use precise geometry when short-sheeting bunks. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, we'll be saying more about the latest Democratic debate this coming evening. Our producer and webmaster, that is Kathy Johnson. You'll find us at jimbohannonshow.com. Alex Hinton, our engineer, and uh, yours truly right here, Jim Bohannon. We come to you weeknights here at Westwood One.